A very good morning, Imago Church family. It is so wonderful to be able to gather together this morning for worship. Our hearts are full of gratitude as we come before the Lord this morning. So grateful that we are the family of God, that He calls us His own. Our God is not ashamed to be our Father and to call us His children. And for that, we're grateful. We're grateful that wherever the ideals lack in our lives, that the grace of God abounds. And this morning, we're coming together to worship our God. Whatever circumstance, whatever feeling we may be experiencing this morning, we can come together in praise. In praise and in rejoicing. Rejoicing that the Lord is good. No matter how crazy everything may seem internally or externally, the Lord is good and the Lord is God. So as we prepare our hearts for worship this morning, we're going to start with a psalm. We've been in the psalms throughout this entire month of June, and today we're going to have our call to worship, our opening to worship, found in the psalms as well in Psalm uh, 45, verses 1 to 7. And you can follow along in your Bibles, or you can see the psalm projected right on your screen. Psalm 45, beginning at verse 1. Let's prepare our hearts for worship with this psalm. My heart is stirred by a noble theme. As I recite verses for the king, my tongue is like the pen of a skillful writer. You are the most excellent of men and your lips have been anointed with grace since God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your side, you mighty one. Clothe yourself with splendor and majesty. In your majesty, ride forth victoriously in the cause of truth, humility, and justice. Let your right hand achieve awesome deeds. Let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let the nations fall beneath your feet. Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and you hate wickedness. Therefore, God... Your God has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. Amen. As we prepare our hearts for worship this morning, may we be anointed with this oil of joy from the Lord. Let's pray together and let's prepare our hearts for worship. God Almighty, we we thank you And we're grateful that we can practice contentment and we can practice rejoicing because our joy comes from the Lord, not from our circumstances, not from our situation, but our joy comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And Lord, we just pray that today we would be able to enter into just this moment of praise this moment of worship. So God, would you receive it as a sweet aroma for your glory and honor this morning. It's in the faithful name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Friends, brothers, sisters, let's come together with hearts full of joy to worship. Good morning, Imago Church. So blessed to have you guys join us this morning. Uh, Like Pastor said, I'd just like to invite you guys to just stand up where you are and just really just try to engage this morning. Amen. Just want to give God all the glory and honor this morning. 
And uh, before we begin, I just want to get, uh, give us a quick scripture. This is from Galatians 5.1. Uh, Christ has set us free for freedom. Therefore, stand firm and don't submit to the bondage of slavery ever again. It's such a powerful verse and just, just an important reminder to just, just sing about that, that free gift, that amazing gift of freedom that God gives us. Just know that all things are possible because Jesus paid the price for that. Amen. We're just going to open up in a quick prayer. Father God, we thank you for uh, for what you're doing, Lord. We thank you for what you're going to do in this service, Lord, for the people you're going to reach, the people that are calling you, Lord. We know you're going to answer them today, Lord. This will be the day that they will see, see you move in their lives, Lord. People that are searching for you, seeking you, Lord. We just know that you're going to do something miraculous, Lord, something marvelous. You're going to show up the way that you always do, Lord, the way no one else can. God, we, we thank you for that, Lord, and we just, we bless this worship, Lord, we pray that, that it's just a sweet aroma to you, Lord. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Jesus' name. 
everyone's focus will just be on you, Lord, that we'll shut everything else out, Father God. Lord, I just thank you for your love, Father God, your love that's just never-ending, Father. Thank you, Lord, that no matter what we do, Lord, in our lives, Lord, that even when we fall, Father God, that you're always there to pick us up, Father God, to hold us love us, Father, no matter what we do, Lord. You're such a good Father. I just pray that everyone will just know that, Lord, and feel that from you, Lord. We surrender our lives to you, Lord. Have your way in our lives, Lord. Right. 
Shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming 
stars Those dazzling heights too fast to climb I got so high to fall so far But I found heaven as love swept on My heart beating, my soul breathing I found my life when I laid it down Upward falling, spirit soaring I touch the sky when my knees hit the ground Which shows your weights? Within your scars This gift of freedom Gold can buy I bought the world And sold my heart You traded heaven To have me again My heart beating My soul breathing I found my life When I laid it down Upward So
at your feet today lord lord there are many lord that are heavy heavy lord with burdens lord and we thank you lord your word says lord come to me all those that are heavy laden and i will give you rest and lord we just rest on your promises today lord for lord you are faithful father god and your promises are yes and amen and i thank you father god there's many watching father god throughout the nation lord and there's different things father god occurring right now but lord we thank you father god that you are god lord over all these different issues lord that you are god father god through illnesses right now that you are god through infirmities lord and we thank you father god that you are touching all those lord that are seeking you this morning and lord we thank you for what you're about to do through the sermon today lord that lord that you speak to the hearts of your people today that lord that a touch from you lord will change lives forever lord and we thank you lord for just anointing our pastor anointing the words lord that you have given him this morning and we thank you for this day in jesus name we pray amen and amen at imago church we are a gospel-centered multicultural community where hope is built through restored relationships And we love not only saying that here at Imago Church, but we love living that out too. We believe that we can experience the hope of Christ through restored relationships with one another. So at this time, I'm going to invite us all to take a moment to greet one another in the name of the Lord. You can do that in the chat. You can do that through a text, through a phone call. Greet someone in the name of the Lord that you didn't come with this morning or that you're not physically present with in this morning today. And every, like every single week, we have a hope through relationships question or we have an opportunity to go deeper with each other just as God goes deeper with us. And today's connecting question is right on the screen. And it's this. During these crazy heat wave that we're experiencing, we've been in triple digits now for almost two weeks. How do you stay cool in the heat of the Central Valley summer? Explain why. Are you in the cave, in the AC cave at home, just like me and and my kids? Or are you figuring out other creative ways to to stay cool during this extreme heat. Go ahead and share with one another in the chat and greet one another in the name of the Lord as you're able to do so. I've definitely missed you all and continue to lift up and pray for you and for your family. If you ever need to talk or pray with anyone, that we have a prayer line that you can actually access and call. You can call that number and you can uh, check in on that email as well. And uh, if you ever have a pastoral need or would just like to follow up or set up a time to uh, set up a a phone call or a, a FaceTime meeting or anything like that, just to be able to follow up, I'd love to do that. So please go ahead and contact uh, that number and the, the church office number and uh, the 
prayer line, email address, or phone numbers, and that will give you access to be able to set up um, an appointment uh, to seek some pastoral care throughout this summer. Um, I very much look forward to it as I've definitely missed being uh, with this entire community and all the families. You continue to be in my prayers and so grateful that you continue to pray for this church as well. We're going to transition now to our time of giving. It's a joyful time where we have an opportunity to give of our tithes, of our offerings, of our gifts. And anything that God invites us to do is what God has already taken initiative on. And God is generous and he delights in pouring down his goodness on us. And we get to respond to that generosity by being generous as well. All of our gifts go to building up the kingdom of God here at Imago Church. And everyone's gifts make just such a tremendous difference and are such a huge blessing to this church community. And so we're going to uh, prepare our hearts and our minds for our time of giving. On the screen, you will see the instructions on how to give. You can give online. That's the preferred method and the encouraged method for all of us during this season of online worship. You can give through text. The instructions are there on the screen as well. And you can also give through check. And you can follow the instructions on the screen and send your check um, over to the address to P.O. Box 1319, Tulare, California, 93275. And all of these uh, tithes and offerings go toward a greater purpose to be able to bless and be a blessing to this church community, to our church community, as we move forward together in this time. Let's take a moment to pray for the offering as we prepare to give. Lord Jesus, we thank you and we give you praise, Lord, because you invite us into a life of abundance, not scarcity, Lord. You invite us into a life of courage, not of fear. And you invite us, Lord, into generosity, God, not, not, not fear or stinginess, Lord. And thank you, God, that when we're generous, we get to reflect more of your heart, and that's the purpose of following you, God. You are our model for living. You are our Lord and our Savior, God. So as you do, we do, Lord. As you gave and laid down your life, we also give and lay down of what you've entrusted us to, Lord, for your praise and for your glory. Multiply this, Lord, for your kingdom's sake. And God, would Imago continue to be a light that shines for Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we just uh, give you praise, and we pray that you would provide for all families at Imago Church, especially those experiencing hardship during this time. You are the great provider and the great sustainer. So it's in your name that we pray. Amen. As a church community, we're continuing to navigate this time of life together even while apart. And I know it's been extremely difficult, it's been tough, it's been tiring, but I'm so grateful for our church community that continues to be resilient, trusting God and moving forward together in courage. And uh, just this month of, um, of last, uh, last week, we had our, our final prayer and devotion time um, on Wednesday for the month of June, and we're going to be pausing on that throughout the month of July, and then we'll be picking up with a plan during uh, the uh, afterwards in August, and we'll be informing everyone on what that's going to be. And uh, through the month of July, we'll still continue to stay connected through the prayer line, through other ways, um, be in touch with others in, in the church community as well. Please pick up the phone, send a call, send a text, uh, be in touch with those from our church community as well. 
but we are in pause during uh, July with uh, youth meetings and um, other typical gatherings. Um, just fantastic to hear uh, folks staying connected in creative ways, young adults with messenger groups. Um, please let us know if you'd like to get connected with any of those groups, we'd love to be able to connect you. And uh, most of us that have young children may have already received our children's ministry packets. Um, please let us know if you haven't and we'll send that right over to you. Um, and just in this time, I wanna encourage everyone to just stay proactive, stay connected, don't get discouraged, stay encouraged, trust in God, hold on to Jesus, hold on to each other, and let's keep moving forward here. And one way to do that is just to proactively reach out and connect, to be a part of Sunday worship, be a part of the engagement time um, before service. We have our pre-service prayer every single um, Sunday, from 9 a.m. to 9.25, and it's a time of fellowship and prayer together as a community. So I wanna invite you all to be a part of that every single Sunday at 9 a.m. before service. And uh, you can find a variety of ways to continue to connect um, with the Imago community. But let's continue to press on as God's people. And at this point, we're going to pray and bring our burdens to the hands of the Lord to the hands that can really sustain the weight of our lives. So we're going to pause and pray in this moment and ask God to be our strength, to be our, our joy, to be our motivation, to continue to, to put one foot in front of the other and to follow him in this time. And we're placing faith over fear just as we've committed to as a church community and we're stepping forward in a full trust that our God is with us and that he will never leave us or forsake us. So just where you are, go ahead and, and take some time. We're gonna jump in in a second and give us all the space to be able to do that. But pray for just our county, pray for our state, pray for our country. It's uh, still a bit of a, a challenging time with regards to the pandemic, with regards to economic issues, with regards to so much. And we want to be able to bring that to the Lord in prayer and to cast our burdens before him. So whatever may be on your mind and on your heart, from the smaller things to the bigger things, let's enter into the presence of our living God. And together as one church community, let's pray. O oh God of life, you are the one who meets us in this place. We pray, Holy Spirit, for your presence to cover us, Lord, deliver us. And God, may we be able to lift up our hearts and to lift up our voices, to sing you songs, to sing you psalms in every single season, especially in this season of disorientation and confusion. In times of restlessness and anxiety, may we be able to simply be still and know that you are God. Your peace and your strength fill us, Holy Spirit. So would you continue to move us forward this week with wisdom, with humility, with love, with peace, and God, we want to let go of any despair and trade that, Lord, for the living hope that we have in Jesus Christ. It's in his precious name that we pray. Amen.
We're going to continue with our time of worship by opening up the Word of God. And today, I'm really excited that we have the opportunity to move forward in our summer rhythm in the Psalms. It's kind of become a bit of an imago tradition where every single summer in June, we take time to just pause and reflect and dive in to the Psalms. We change up the rhythm a little bit so that we have the opportunity to, to go beyond simply listening and responding to the Word of God, but instead together as a church community, we have the chance in the summer to engage and go deeper with the Word of God, where we have the privilege of being able to sharpen one another as a church community. That's part of the call of the scriptures that just as iron sharpens iron, we are to sharpen one another as well. And today we're continuing in the Psalms. I'll be sharing just a little bit of background and then we will jump into Psalm 46 and read verses 1 to 11 together in a moment. But really the reason that we're doing this and taking time to really just pause, reflect, and rest in the Psalms is because we're learning that every single one of us is called to draw near to God, to draw near to his word. And one way that we're able to do that is simply by practicing this, uh, this rhythm of, of really um, reflecting and focusing our thinking, of meditating on the word of God. And it's one of those things that we are learning to do together. Each one of us is able and capable to reflect and focus and dive in and meditate on the Word of God. And so we're going to take time to be able to do that. Just as Psalm 1 told us that that is the key to a, a life that is transformed. It's to be able to really reflect on the word of God day and night. So that's why we do what we do during the summer, to encourage each other, to build each other up, to sharpen one another. And each week we have the opportunity to have a special song or a, or a reflection from a, a community member. And today we're gonna have the opportunity to do that as well as we continue to change up our rhythm here during the summer. What we've seen throughout the Psalms in the past few weeks is that the Psalms have a way of challenging us. And as the Psalms challenge us, we're actually shaped, shaped more and more into the people that God created us to be. When we take time to reflect and meditate on the Psalms and on the Word of God, we actually get closer to the heart and the mind of God. When we read the Psalms, we really get a glimpse at what the entire point of the Bible is. Closeness to God. The point of the Bible is not just information, not just inspiration like we've talked about over the past couple of weeks, but the purpose and the point of the scriptures is transformation as we draw close to God. The purpose of being a Christian, of being a church person, of being a disciple, is that together we would be able to draw closer to God. Imago Church exists for that reason. We are a church of disciples who makes disciples, who multiplies spiritually mature people who are transformed more and more into new people, new creations that reflect the image of Christ. The Bible is the written word of God that serves as this living link between us and the living God, the God of all creation. So as we take time to do what we've been doing these past couple of weeks, and as we take time to do that on our own at home or with our families, as we take time to reflect and meditate on the Word of God, we are actually experiencing that connection, that living link between us and God. And as we do that, as we draw near to God, as we uh, are close to Him and we meditate and reflect on His Word, God transforms us and He makes us new. 
He gives us new hearts and new minds and new thoughts. And God does this through refocusing our thinking. That's the definition we've been working on for meditation. Meditation simply means focused thinking. And God calls us to meditate on his word in order to refocus our thinking. Because refocused thinking leads to renewed living. So as one body, as a church community, we've taken this past month to sing the Psalms, to pray the Psalms, and to live the Psalms. And in just a moment, we're going to read and reflect on one of the most famous Psalms of all, Psalm 46. But before we do that, as we've been doing these past few weeks together, we're going to uh, check out this video on the book of Psalms, explaining a little bit of the background and the context of the book of Psalms. Let's take a quick uh, listen, and then we'll come back together. The book of Psalms, it's a collection of 150 ancient Hebrew poems, songs, and prayers that come from all different periods in Israel's history. Many of these poems are connected with King David, 73, actually, and he was known as a poet and a harp player. But there are many different authors behind these poems. There's the poems of Asaph, or from the sons of Korah, and some are from other worship leaders in the temple. Even Solomon and Moses have their own poems, and nearly one-third of these are anonymous. Now, many of these poems came to be used by the choirs that sang in Israel's temple, but the Book of Psalms is actually not a hymn book. At some point in the period after Israel's exile to Babylon, these ancient poems were gathered together and intentionally arranged into the book of Psalms before us. And it has a very unique design and message that you're not going to notice unless you read it from beginning to end. Now to see how the book of Psalms is designed, it's actually most helpful to start at the end. The book concludes with five poems of praise to the God of Israel, and each one begins and ends with the word hallelujah, which is Hebrew for a command to tell a group of people to praise Yah, which is short for the divine name Yahweh. Now, that's a really nice five-part arrangement, and it looks like someone's giving us a conclusion here to the book. So, it invites the question, does the book have any other signs of intentional design? If you pay attention to the headings of the poems, you'll notice that at five places, your Bible translators have the heading book one, book two, book three, four, and five at various points, and that these divide the book into five large sections. Now, the reason for this is that the final poem in each of those sections have a very similar ending that looks like an editorial edition. It reads something like, May the Lord, the God of Israel, be blessed forever and ever. Amen and amen. So the book has a conclusion. It has an internal organization into five main parts. And so the natural place to go from here is now the beginning to look for an introduction. And what do we find? Psalms 1 and 2. Two, which stand outside of book one because most of the poems in book one are linked to David except Psalms one and two, which are anonymous. Psalm one celebrates how blessed the person is who meditates on the Torah, prayerfully reading it day and night and then obeying it. Now the word Torah simply means teaching and more specifically it came to refer to the five books of Moses that begin the Old Testament. And here actually the word seems to be used with both meanings in mind which explains why it has five main parts. The book of Psalms is being offered as a new Torah that will teach God's people the lifelong practice of prayer as they strive to obey God's commands given in the first Torah. Psalm 2 is a poetic reflection on God's promise to King David from 2 Samuel chapter 7, that one day a messianic king would come and establish God's kingdom over the world, defeat evil and rebellion among the nations. Now Psalm 2 concludes by saying that all those who take refuge in the messianic king will be blessed, precisely the word used to open Psalm 1. And so together, these two poems tell us that the book of Psalms is designed to be the prayer book of God's people as they strive to be faithful to the commands of the Torah as they hope and wait for the future messianic kingdom. Now with these two themes introduced, we can start to see how... So amazing to see everything that goes into this precious book of the Psalms. 
Now we're going to open up the Psalms to Psalm 46. And I'll be reading it in English. You can follow along in Spanish or in the language of the heart. I know that when we're together in person, we have more opportunities to be able to uh, read both in English and in Spanish. And please, any of our Spanish speakers at home, if you need translation for any of our resources, we're more than happy to do that. So please reach out and let us know if that's a way to serve you during this time. We'd love to be able to uh, care for you in that way. But I'll be reading Psalm 46 for us and um, uh, beginning at verse 1. Psalm 46 for, it says here, the director of music of the sons of Korah. Um, and we will start at verse 1. Psalm 46, verse 1. Let's hear now with open ears and open hearts from the word of God. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its, wa though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. The Lord says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. The Psalms are God's songbook. As we've been talking about the last few weeks, at the heart of the Bible is the heart of God in the Psalms. So that's why we've been taking this time these last few weeks to simply refocus and regather ourselves by being refreshed in the Psalms. Perhaps for you, just like for me and many of us in our community and in our world, this has been the last three or four months. So much has felt very overwhelming. So much has felt just out of control. What we're reminded of here in this psalm is that in the midst of the battle, in the midst of the confusion, in the midst of the uncertainty and the anxiety, the voice of the Lord says, be still and know that I am God. In this passage, we read one of the most famous psalms ever written by the biblical poets, the sons of Korah. And the majority of the psalms, as we saw in the video, are actually written by King David, who's also referred to as the psalmist. King David, as we focused on him primarily last week, we learned that he was a man that the Bible, the, the Bible refers to as a man after God's own heart. He wrote, many of the Psalms, and David by no means was a perfect man or a perfect king. And in fact, he messed up a lot. But he held on and he trusted the living God. He trusted the God that would never, ever let go of him. David served as the second king of the ancient people of Israel, and we read about his whole story in the Old Testament, in the books of uh, First and uh, Second Samuel. 
and he experienced many times of hardship, but he trusted God with radical faith. He trusted God with a faith that was not based on his works, not based on his deeds, because he messed up a lot, and the Bible doesn't hide that. But he trusted God with a radical faith based on his need, based on his need for the grace of God. David needed a good and faithful God that would never let go of him. And that's what we see throughout the Psalms. That's what we see throughout the life of David as well. He held on to a no matter what kind of faith. And that's our calling as well in this season. To trust God with a no matter what kind of faith. No matter what happens, I'm holding on to the God who will never let go of me. In the Psalms, we see every single human emotion expressed, fear, confession, failures, praises, joys, giving thanks to God in all seasons. We see that in David's Psalms and in others as well. Through the Psalms, we really learn how to pray. The psalmist serves as a prayer coach, giving us words for how to pray and how to discover God's presence in the good times as well as in the bad or in the confusing or uncertain times. The Psalms are not the kind of book that you just read once and, you know, check it off your list and then never open it up again. But the Psalms are meant to be read through a lifetime. Not just once and then put down, but the Psalms are designed for a lifetime of reading and reflecting and praying In fact, the Psalms are written in such a way for a lifetime of slow reading and rereading and re 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 reading in order that we may experience that closeness to God, that intimacy with God. The Psalms are written for reflection, and the Psalms are really prayers, prayers that are meant to become our own prayers. Prayers that the people of God had pray, have prayed throughout history and throughout the world. It connects us with God's family. These are prayer. The Psalms were prayers that even Jesus prayed as well. The Psalms are poems. The Psalms are prayers. The Psalms are praises for people like you and me. For people that are learning to live. People learning to live by God's grace, by God's wisdom, People that aren't perfect, but people that worship a perfect God and seek God's justice and seek to apply God's goodness and God's reality in this world as it is. So in those times when we feel that we have no words, when we're truly speechless, in those seasons where we only have tears and nothing else, where we only have confusion or unanswered questions, remember, friends, brothers, sisters, that we have the Psalms. We have the Psalms that can comfort us. We have the Psalms to pray. We have the Psalms to help us to live. The Psalms that point us to a good God in every season. When we don't know what to say, the Psalms give us words for how to pray and how to enter into the presence of the living God. We also see that David was a musician and even this Psalm that we read, Psalm 46, was actually a song. So before all the hundreds and thousands of worship songs, the original songbook of the people of God, of the ancient Israelites, and of the early church, the original songbook for God's people was the Psalms. The Psalms are God's songbooks, so they are in fact the original praise songs for the people of God. 
They are the original prayer book for those seeking after the heart of God. I'm so grateful for this gift that we have in God's word in the Psalms. In my life, I've had the opportunity to experience many mentors, many people, men and women that have shaped my life as a leader, as a pastor, as a person. I've had mentors in my life. Some are alive. Some of them are no longer alive. Some I've been able to meet and others I haven't been able to meet. But someone that has actually impacted my pastoral ministry and shaped me as a leader has been a teacher and mentor that I never met, but I've read and been inspired by his life and his work. I never met this person because he actually passed away in 1945, many years before I was even born. Get this, it was even years before my parents were born. I never had a chance to meet him, but I look forward to a moment in eternity to be able to even uh, hang out with this brother in Christ, with this mentor, a pastor actually, a pastor by the name of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He died in 1945 and he actually lived in Germany while Germany was taken over by Hitler and the Nazis. Bonhoeffer not only preached the word of God, but Dietrich Bonhoeffer lived the word of God. He stood up to Hitler and the Nazis, and he resisted against that evil, that principality before him. Eventually, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was arrested and he was killed for his courage, and he was hanged in a Nazi camp in a place called the Gallows. And this is a brief story about what the Psalms meant to be Dietrich Bonhoeffer. In the last days of his life, actually two years before he was killed, we have access to a very personal letter, to a very special letter, a personal letter that Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote to his parents. In it, he described how he was able to keep going how he was able to find strength day by day, knowing that he was going to be executed at any time, at any day. It was less than two years before his death, while he was imprisoned, where Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote a letter to his parents. We now have access to it, and I'm going to read from it directly. And in this letter, he describes how he's able to find strength every morning, how he passes the time while in prison and while being in a time of complete unknown, surrendering his life in God's hands. So how does Bonhoeffer pass the time? How does he find hope? Well, let me read you directly from this letter that he wrote. Bonhoeffer says, I read the Psalms. I read the Psalms every single day. As I have done for years, I know the Psalms, I love the Psalms, I love them more than any other book. I want us to pause and reflect on that for just a moment. This letter from this man that impacted so many lives, including my own, and, and by association, this church as well. A brilliant man of God, one of the greatest theologians, in my opinion, in modern history. He did not only proclaim the word of God, but he lived the word of God. He himself was renowned around the world. He had hundreds of writings and lectures. In his lifetime, he read thousands of books but yet, he was also someone who was one of the most perhaps influential, who, who met some of the most influential people and experienced some of the most influential moments of the past 100 years. Maybe just like us here today in 2020. You want history? You got it. In 50 years, in 100 years, 2020 will be remembered. But in his final, final moments, 
none of that mattered. None of that mattered to Dietrich Bonhoeffer. All that he could hold on to was the Psalms. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, just like our Lord and King Jesus Christ before him, Bonhoeffer was drenched in the Psalms. They were drenched and embedded in his mind, in his heart. So when he was pressed in life, he learned to bleed the Psalms. How can we, as God's people, who focus our lives, who meditate on his word, who meditate on these precious Psalms, on his entire word, how can we allow the word of God to be so embedded in our minds, in our hearts, in our memories, to be seeped into who we are, into our DNA, so that when this life, when this life, when circumstances that are completely out of our control, which almost feels like everything around us right now, when all of that comes pressing down on us, may we be so drenched in the Psalms that the Psalms are what we bleed. When life hits, we can respond. Not in hopelessness, not in fear, not in anxiety. But when this life hits, we can respond. Be still. And know that I am God, says the Lord. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Psalm 46 is one of the most important and the most commonly known psalms. And in fact, this is one of the most commonly known phrases in all of the Bible. Be still and know that I am God, says the Lord. Sometimes we can think of this phrase of be still and we can, you know, just kind of wave it off and think that it's just a cheap bumper sticker phrase or some kind of coffee cup logo. But these words from the Psalms, these words of the Lord, these words be still and know that I am God. Remember, these were not words that were spoken in peaceful pastures with little lambs and maybe everyone holding hands and swaying back and forth. But it is in the midst of chaos. It is in the midst of a war zone, in the midst of uncertainty and disorientation that we hear the voice of the Lord in Psalm 46. He says that He Himself makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and he shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. So it's in the midst of the war zone, in the midst of the, of the, of the attacks. It's in the midst of the fire that the Lord says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. Be still. He is God. He is with you. Never let go of the God who will never ever let go of you. So this week, how can we live this psalm? Not just hear it, but live it and pray it. How can we practice being still and knowing that He is God? 
How can the Lord be your strength? How can the Lord be your refuge, your shelter this week? And as we've been doing, continue to read a psalm a day and ask yourself, what does this psalm say about God? What does it say about the mind and the heart of God? What does it say about us, about people? How does this psalm invite us into deeper worship, to the heart of worship? How does this psalm invite us to transform and renew our lives, to refocus our thinking? This month, we're taking time to rest in the psalms. And we're going to have an opportunity to do that as we hear from reflections in our community. We're doing this throughout this time as we're uh, in the psalms, studying the psalms together. And today we have the privilege of having our sister Sandra Marquez. She's going to share with us a reflection on Psalm 23. And immediately right after that, we're going to hear a special from our uh, worship leader, Marcus, and a special guest, Jordan Rodriguez. So let's take this time to simply rest in the Psalms as we hear this reflection and this special song. Thank you, Pastor Carlos. It's an honor and privilege to be able to do the reflection on Psalms today. Throughout the book of Psalms, we see the heart of God and His goodness. Amen. And the reflection that I chose today is on Psalms 23, which is a very familiar scripture for many. We sometimes hear it during events or funerals, but A lot of times, because it's a familiar scripture, we choose to skip over it because we've heard them before. Amen. But as I was going through the book of Psalms and just kind of looking at all of God's characteristics and promises, I came back to Psalms 23 because there's so much there for us to reflect on today. And I would like for us to read the scripture together just to remind us of God's promises. Amen. And I'm reading out of Psalms 23, verses 1 through 6, from the New Living Translation. If you could join me. Starting on verse 1, the Word of God says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Verse 4. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect me and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Verse 6. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. What a beautiful scripture. A couple of important points that I would like to focus on are as follows. In verses 1 through 3, it tells us the Lord is our shepherd. What does that mean that He leads us? Amen. And it goes on to say that we shall not want, which means we lack nothing. And as we go through these seasons, there might be many needs. But am I inviting him into my life? Because that's his promise for us as we allow him to lead us. Amen. In Psalm 23, 4, it says, As I walk through the shadow, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. If he walks with us, church, That means he's protecting us through the valley. Amen. What harder place to go through the valley of the shadow of death, but he's with us. Are we inviting him to walk with us this day? 
Are we asking him for his protection through anything we're going through? And that's the question for today. Are we walking under his protection? Amen. Verse 5 and 6 shows us his blessings. The word says, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When we're going through a difficult time, whether it's emotionally, financially, whatever the case may be, do I allow myself to just walk in God's faithfulness? For he never leaves us or forsakes us. That's what his word says. And it also says that he is with me all the days of my life. How often do we forget that, church, that he is with us? He's right there walking with us. He's beside us. But are we inviting him into our situation? And in closing, I would like for us to reflect on Psalms 23 this week for yourself and not to skip any of the familiar passages because there's always something in his word where we can rest in his promises where we can rest knowing that his protection and comfort is upon us amen let us pray father god we thank you father god for your beautiful word lord that it's always on time that there is such a divine appointment in every one of your scriptures, Lord. That, Lord, that you are faithful, Lord. That your protection is here, Lord. That you meet all our needs. And no matter what we're going through, Father God, that you are walking right beside us. And, Lord, we thank you for the word that was shared today. We thank you, Father God that you continue to just bless those that need a touch from you this morning. And we thank you, Father God, for what you're doing and for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. But really my shoulders ain't built for this and I don't have nothing It's like I'm standing in the rain and you offer me a raincoat But I would rather stand there dripping wet than take the hand out What's wrong with me? You claim you always got your hands out And I cannot continue on my own so take my hands now I give you everything God, not just a little bit, take it from me I ain't nothing but a hypocrite, I hate sin but I built a house and I still live in it Afraid to open up the door to you and let you into it Yo, my soul is lost and what it needs is your direction I know I told you I do not need your protection But I lied to you, this thing is tiring The man was not created for it, God please retire me now these hands are
Trust is something I am not accustomed to And I know the Bible says that I should always trust in you But I don't ever read that book enough And when I have a question I don't take the time to look it up or pick it up It collects dust on my nightstand I'm just being honest Please take this out of my hands I have no control I am just a person But thank the Lord that I serve a God that's perfect I do not deserve the opportunities you're giving me I never knew what freedom was till I learned what prison means I am not ashamed I don't care if they remember me My life will always have a hole If you are not the centerpiece Take me out of bondage Take all of my pride If I don't have a savior I don't have nothing inside Take all my lust Take all of my lies There's no better feeling When I got in the sky up in your eyes It's amazing So beautiful and profound to be able to hear voices from our community and songs and poetry. The Psalms continue to be alive here and now, today. The Psalms are prayers, the Psalms are, pra are praises, the Psalms are poems, the Psalms are reflections. And through the month of June, I wanna invite our entire church community to be continuing to pray a Psalm a day. We're placing resources for that on all of our social media channels, and you can pray that daily. So as a church community, let's just come before the Lord and pray. God, you call us to be still and know that you are God. To be still, to stop fighting, to stop running to stop avoiding, but instead be still before you. Because who we are before you is who we truly are, God. And Lord, I pray that you would continue to just do the work, do the work that you started in us, Lord, and bring it about to completion. Lord, we are your people and you are our God. Thank you, Lord that that is our comfort, that is our peace, that is our security in this time. God, we've been able to sing praises. We've been able to hear your word. We've been able to simply be still and honor you as God. Thank you, Lord, that your word never comes back empty, Lord. But we're full this morning. We're full of nourishment that comes, Lord. Spiritual nourishment, spiritual refreshment 
through you, Jesus, the living water. God, as we continue in our time of worship, we pray, Lord, that we would experience your real presence, your real power. And God, we thank you for all that you've done. We love you and praise you simply for who you are. Receive all the glory this morning, we pray, in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.
Yes, Lord, nothing else will do. Only you, only the real thing, only the real source of life and the one true God, Lord, who we will forever worship. Thank you, Lord, that you use this time for purpose. This time of worship, Lord, you use it to make us new, to make us reflectors of Jesus, God, to grow in spiritual maturity, Lord, and to be transformed into people after your own heart, God, people that reflect your heart. And Lord, I just pray that as a church, as a body, that we would be able to practice what it means to be still and know that you are God. No one else and nothing else will do, Lord. Only you. Give you all the praise and glory, God, and we lift you up because you are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, it's been such a joy to be able to worship together as one body, as one community, in one voice, lifting up our praises to our King and to our Lord Jesus Christ. There's ways to stay connected and we wanna encourage you to continue to do that throughout the week. I'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to having opportunities to connect throughout the summer. Let's continue to be in prayer for everything that God has in store for us, including exploring possibilities for uh, an outside in-person service at different points this summer. Please be praying for the logistics of that and all the details that go along with that, but we will keep you up to date and informed with all of those details. But I'm so glad that we get to continue to worship and lift up praises in all seasons. That's what the Psalms teach us. Now, as we go out from here, would you receive this blessing from the book of Ephesians in chapter three, beginning at verse 20. Receive this blessing. Now to God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than all that we ask or imagine, according to his power at work in us and through us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Go in the strength of Christ. God bless you, and we'll be here next week for worship. Go in God's peace. Blessings.